हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू आवर यूट्यूब चैनल सो टूडेज वीडियो इज अबाउट इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ हीट ट्रीटमेंट प्रोसेस सो वाट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड बाई हीट ट्रीटमेंट सो हीट ट्रीटमेंट इज अ प्रोसेस इन विच अ मटेरियल यूजली आर यू कैन कंसिडर मेटल आर एन इट्स एलॉयस सो इट इज हीटेड एंड कूल्ड अंडर कंट्रोल कंडीशन टू एल्टर इट्स माइक्रो स्ट्रक्चर आर यू कैन से द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ द मटेरियल सो बेसिकली इन द हीट ट्रीटमेंट प्रोसेस वी हैव थ्री स्टेजेज द फर्स्ट स्टेज इज हीटिंग सेकेंड स्टेज इज होल्डिंग एंड थर्ड स्टेज इज कूलिंग सो वी कैन कंट्रोल आल दीज थ्री स्टेजेज लाइक इन हीटिंग वाट आर द हीटिंग रेट्स यू आर यूजिंग होल्डिंग हाउ मच टाइम यू आर होल्डिंग इट एंड देन फाइनली कूलिंग सो आइदर इट इज अ स्लो कूलिंग और मॉडरेट कूलिंग और फास्ट कूलिंग सो द पर्पज ऑफ हीट ट्रीटमेंट इज टू इम्प्रूव द मैकेनिकल फिजिकल केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द मटेरियल टू मेक इट मोर सुटेबल फॉर द एनी काइंड ऑफ पर्टिकुलर एप्लीकेशन सो वी विल डिस्कस इन डिटेल अबाउट डिफरेंट हीट ट्रीटमेंट प्रोसेसिस इन दिस वीडियो सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वाई इज द हीट ट्रीटमेंट इज रिक्वायर्ड सो ड्यूरिंग मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेसेस सम मटेरियल्स माइट नीड टू बी इन्वॉल्व इन प्रोसीजर्स दैट अल्टर दियर ग्रेन स्ट्रक्चर सो हीट ट्रीटमेंट आर अ वे ऑफ यूजिंग कंट्रोल हीटिंग एंड कूलिंग प्रोसीजर टू चेंज द मटेरियल्स फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज टू इम्प्रूव दैम फॉर डिफरेंट वराइटी ऑफ एप्लीकेशन लेट्स टेक एन दिस वन एग्जाम्पल सपोज यू आर डूइंग सम काइंड ऑफ सीवियर प्लास्टिक डिफॉर्मेशन सपोज दिस मटेरियल यू आर taking it to the open die forging so in open die forging we are applying the compressive stresses in our material so suppose you are deforming it up to 90% so after deforming it to 90% you can increase the uh, uh, this you can decrease the grain size of the material so it will improve the strength of this alloy but at the same time it also having higher residual stresses in the material so to relieve this residual stresses we need to follow some kind of heat treatment either it is annealing or normalizing or any so we required some heat treatment to relieve this uh, this residual stresses and also it will improve some kind of ductility so the heat treatment will introduce to relieve the residual stresses and at the same time it will also increase the mechanical properties of the material so there are variety of heat treatments that can affect the mechanical properties in different ways so if if we can term that heat treatment is commonly used to alter or strengthen the material structure through a heating and cooling uh, procedure so it offer many advantages so the first advantage is it can change the material's physical mechanical properties the second advantage is it relieve residual stresses making the part easier to machine or build the third advantage is it increase the strength making the material more ductile or more flexible it introduces wear resistance characteristic either just to the surface or right through the part it improves the brittleness some metals can become weak or brittle once exposed to a specific environment so they need to be treated in order to overcome this and final one is can also improve the electrical magnetic property of the material which will improve its compatibility with other material so it can improve the mechanical properties it can increase the material resistance to wear and corrosion it can also modify the physical properties and also it can relieve the residual stresses so what are the different types of heat treatment so basically uh, here we are talking in terms of steels so because steels is the most used alloy so there are different application of steel so based on that this heat treatment is classified in different uh, types first one is annealing second one is normalizing third one is hardening or quenching we can call it fourth one is tempering and then we have also surface case hardening which is only for the uh, improve the surface property so annealing is classified as a full annealing spherodizing annealing partial annealing process annealing recrystallization annealing diffusion annealing and when we uh, differentiate between annealing normalizing and hardening 
so we can see here only the difference between this annealing normalizing and hardening is the cooling rate so when you heating some material up to a, a critical temperature and holding for some time so when you are cooling for the longer period of time or you can say furnace cool so the furnace cool that will call as a annealing while if you are doing a moderate cooling or you can say air cooling so this process will called as a normalizing again this uh, temperature is uh, different for annealing and and this normalizing and also for this hardening so hardening generally will uh, take place in either you can say water or oil or brine solution so it's called a sudden quenching if you are uh, taking out the material at this uh, this from this temperature and putting it into some uh, this water or brine solution or oil so it's called hardening process now if you can see the annealing process so in annealing heat treatment materials are heated up to a desired temperature so this desired temperature will be a, a different for different kinds of annealing and also different types of steel as we can see the, uh, in this uh, iron carbon phase diagram uh, based on the carbon content we have three types of steel so first one is a eutectoid steel which is having composition of 0.8 and less than 0.8 we have hypo eutectoid steel and more than 0.8 so from 0.8 to 2.14 we have hyper eutectoid steel and from 0.02 to 0.8 hypo eutectoid steel so based on these three types of steel the temperature will be uh, this uh, different for different kind of an uh, annealing processes so in annealing process uh, the materials are heated up to a at uh, this desired temperature and which is held for a specific period of time uh, before the material is slowly or uh, slowly cooled uh, depending on the type of material and the process refines the grain microstructure making it more uniform and easier to work with it's also used to improve the material ductility that is the most important thing if you are doing annealing so we are going to improve the ductility of the material and we are relieving the residual stresses in the in the material so annealing is often used to reduce the hardness of the material as well which helps to improve its machinability and suitable for both ferrous and non ferrous alloy so in this iron carbon phase diagram if you can see so here it is showing uh, uh, this uh, different uh, this uh, uh, temperature range for different kind of annealing process so as you can see that this uh, diffusion annealing this diffusion annealing so it generally take place between 1100 to 1200 degrees celsius and for this recrystallization annealing process annealing and also we have one spherodizing in the link so this will take place below this ac1 temperature so in iron carbon phase diagram there are uh, this uh, this temperature is called as ac1 temperature and this temperature range is called as ac3 temperature and this temperature is called ac and there is some ac0 also and ac2 which is a curie temperature of iron so uh, and also if you can see the this a uh, full annual uh, this full annealing so which is this range full annealing so it is uh, it is for this hypoeutectoid steel it is higher than ac3 temperature but for hyperuetectoid steel it is between ac1 and acm temperature so that again uh, uh, it depends on the what kind of microstructure you want and what kind of mechanical properties you want finally in your uh, uh, for your application now come to the normalizing process as i say that in the uh, in normalizing process the we heat up to a certain temperature that uh, critical temperature and hold for some time and cool in this air cooling so air cooling will take place so it is the process of heating a material to a temperature above a critical limit and then cooling in open air this heat treatment is a heat treating process used to provide uniformity in the grain size and microstructure in some steel grades it is also used to cast iron to produce more uniformly improved wear resistance and increased hardness value and uh, heat treatment establishes a more uniform carbide size in distribution which facilitates later heat treatment operation and produce a more uniform final product so if if someone will ask you the difference between the annealing process and normalizing process so annealing process generally uh, in annealing process uh, we use uh, this furnace cooling and in normalizing process we use air cooling so if you are doing a furnace cooling so it's obvious that the cooling rate is very slow so here you can find coarser grain structure while in case of air cooling there will be the 
fine grain size so it's obvious that in normalizing uh, this you can find higher strength as compared to the normalizing process uh, as compared to the handling process now come to the so yeah uh, this is what uh, it is shown here so you can clearly see that the normalizing temperature is generally higher than the this full annealing temperature and also the another difference for this hyperutectoid case the full annealing temperature will be between acm and ac1 temperature while normalizing temperature will be higher than the acm temperature so this is the two major difference and from microstructure point of view in annealing you can find a coarser microstructure in normalizing you can find finer microstructure Eastern, uh, Eastern point of view, uh, uh, this normalizing will provide higher strength as compared to the annealing. While it's reverse in case of ductility point of view. For ductility, annealing provides much better ductility as compared to normalizing. Now come to the hardening process. So the use of this treatment will result in an improvement of the mechanical properties, mainly especially the hardness. So as I said in the introduction, the hardening process means the sudden this sudden uh, this uh, quenching so if you are heating a material up to a cri uh, this a critical temperature and holding for some time and doing a sudden quenching uh, this sudden uh, uh, this uh, quenching uh, either in air uh, uh, sorry either in oil or water or brine solution so if you can see the severity of a quenching process for these three is different that we will discuss in the next slide so alloys are heated above the critical transformation temperature for the material then cooled rapidly enough to cause the soft initial materials to transform to a much harder and stronger structure so when we uh, discuss about steel so basically we heat this steel up to a austenite region and then sudden quench and this result in the martensitic structure so martensite is hardest uh, uh, hardest uh, phase in this steel and alloys may be air cooled or cooled with quenching so um, in oil water or another liquid that is brine I, I told you but depending upon the amount of alloying elements in the material so hardened material are usually tempered or stress relieved to improve their dimensional stability yes this is the main point if you are doing hardening hardness will increase but at the same time it also provides the higher residual stresses or brittleness in the material so to remove this we need to do the tempering so we will discuss about tempering in upcoming slides or you can do the stress relief so uh, uh, here you can see the uh, effect of a quenching medium so you can see this uh, uh, air have a small severity of quench so hardness will be small while oil have moderate severity of quench so the hardness will be moderate water having the large severity of quench so it has the largest hardening but apart from that we have an another one that is called brine solution which is having the highest severity of quench that will provide more hardness as compared to the water quench material now what is tempering process so tempering is a process in which previously hardened or normalized steel is usually heated to a temperature below the lower critical temperature so as, as i mentioned in steel this lower critical temperature is ac1 and cooled at a suitable rate primarily to increase the ductility and toughness of the material and, and but also to increase the grain size of the matrix or material steels are tempered by reheating after hardening to obtain specific values of mechanical properties and also to relieve quenching stresses and to ensure the dimensional instability tempering usually follows quenching from the above the upper critical temperature however tempering is also used to relieve the stresses and reduces the hardness developed during building and to relieve stresses induced by forming and machining so there are different kind of uh, this different stages of tempering first stage of tempering second stage of tempering third stage of tempering that again depends on the suppose this is uh, ac1 temperature so like this so different different stage of tempering depend on the temperature range how you want so uh, uh means like uh, if you are heating uh, below this uh, ac1 temperature and holding and do the air cooling so this is how this tempering will help so it will helps to in uh, 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 improve the uh, this uh, mechanical properties in terms of improve the ductility of the material it will improve the toughness of the material and at the same time it relieve the residual stresses so uh, here you can see the uh, 
a combination of hardening and tempering so this is the hardening process so it is uh, going uh, this above a3 temperature so it is kind of hypoeutectoidy steel so heating above a3 temperature and then a water quench and after that the same uh, material will heat uh, just below a1 temperature for some time and then water cooling or you can say that air cooling will have to be performed so thank you so much for watching this video we will come up with the more uh, details about the heat treatment in our upcoming videos uh, related to uh, this uh, uh, related to this uh, surface uh, hardening treatment that is the case hardening so we have different types of case hardening like carburizing nitriding carbonitriding cyaniding induction hardening and flame hardening so we will discuss this in our next video so thank you so much for watching this video thank you